Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back once again to our ongoing series on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamini Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pasrita Deshatarane. All glories to Sridhar Prabhupada. So this morning I was thinking that um, we actually may never finish this series because, well, the glories of Vrindavan are unlimited. And that is made very clear by Srila Pabonanda Saraswati in his epic Vrindavan Mahimamrita. He writes therein, He who offers respectful obeisances to Vrindavan is worshipped by the three worlds. He who has no respect for Vrindavan is reviled by the three worlds. He who takes Vrindavan very seriously is taken seriously by all the demigods. And he who takes Vrindavan lightly becomes as insignificant as a blade of grass. He further says, anyone who smells a flower from Vrindavan, feels breezes from Vrindavan, sees a person from Vrindavan, or somehow or other bows down in the direction of Vrindavan, or once utters the auspicious name Vrindavan, even if he dies in some place far from Vrindavan, will at once attain that transcendental abode. <laughs> and the other day I was reading um, Garga Samhita, and it echoes the, the same. By uttering the name of Vrindavan, one attains the merit of chanting Krishna's holy names. By hearing the name of Vrindavan, one acquires the merit of hearing Krishna's leela. By touching Vrindavan, one obtains the merit of saintly association. By smelling the fragrance of Vrindavan, one is blessed by the merit of smelling the sweet fragrance of Tosi leaves offered to Lord Govinda Dev. Hare Krishna. So today we're uh, continuing with our mini series on uh, stimulation for ecstatic love, and this will be part uh, 43. In this lecture, I'd like to continue discussing the sacred dust of Vrindavan, or as we all know it, Brajarenu. Last week, we mentioned how the dust of Vrindavan is sacred uh, because of the touch of Lord Krishna's lotus feet as he traverses the uh, Vrindavan forest and the pasturing grounds of Vrindavan. However, it's not only Krishna's feet that make the dust of Vrindavan special, but it's all of his associates, as well as our great Acharyas who have all walked on that sacred ground. The dust of the feet of such devotees must also be considered extremely sacred. This is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, second canto, third chapter, verse 23, where it said, the person who has not at any time received the dust of the feet of the Lord's pure devotee upon his head is certainly a dead body. And the person who has never experienced the aroma of the Tulsi leaves from the lotus feet of the Lord is also a dead body, although breathing. Bhagavatam. Let us also remember that um, Krishna's greatest devotees, the milkmaids of Vrindavan, the gopis, are always walking barefoot through the uh, Vrindavan countryside. Sri Uddhava uh, thus concludes um, his famous prayers to the gopis by actually worshipping the dust of their feet. That's Srimad Bhagavatam 10.47.63. He says, Bande Nanda Brajashtrinam Padarenum Abhikshnasha Rasham Hari Kathod Gurinam Punati Bhavana Trayam. I constantly glorify the dust of the feet of the women of Nanda's cowherd pastures. Their chanting of the activities of Lord Krishna purify the entire universe. All glories to the Braja Gopis. And of course, of all the Gopis, it is Srimati Radharani who is the chief. Therefore, Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati begins his illustrious Radharasa Sudhanidhi by actually glorifying the dust of Radha's feet. He writes, 
I bow down to the glories of the daughter of Bhishramanu, the supremely astonishing opulence of whose lotus feet dust is incomprehensible to the gods like Brahma and Shiva, and whose compassion-soaked glances rain down the nectar of the essence of all human goals. Then he continues, I constantly meditate on the dust of Shirada's feet, which has limitless power, being the magic potion that immediately brings that Purusha, who is imperceptible to even such great souls as Brahma, Shiva, Shukadev, uh, Narada, Bhishma, under her control. I meditate on the dust of Radhika's feet, which is the cow of plenty, bestowing rasa on all those who worship it as a festival of love, just as it was with the noble gopis who by taking it on their heads attained their desired goal, the peacock-crowned Lord endowed with all virtues, Krishna. Then in verse um, 33 of Radharasa Sudhaniti, he concludes, and this is really nice, Happily abandoning my family and unlimited riches, as well as all kinds of other spiritual practices in which I have long lost any faith, I simply meditate on the dust of Shimati Radharani's lotus feet, which rains down on me torrents of amazing natural joy. <laughs> Such wonderful verses. Now, Gaudiya Vaishnavas generally say that three uh, different activities performed in three different holy doms very quickly give Krishna prema. So this is a special interest to us. In Navadvip, Hari Nam Sankirtan awards love of God. They say in Jagannath Puri, by relishing Jagannath Swami's remnants, one can easily achieve perfection. And in Braj, in Vrindavan, Prema comes to one who uh, glorifies, honors, contacts, and rolls in the sacred dust Brajvena, or sometimes they say Brajraj. Isn't that nice? Srila Raghunath Dasko Swami says in verse 1 of Shankapa Prakasha Stotram, without worshipping the pollen of Shivada's lotus feet, without taking shelter of Vrindavan, which bears her footprints, and without respectfully greeting the great souls whose hearts are filled with deep love for her, how will one be able to plunge into the nectarian ocean of love for Lord Sri Krishna? Vrindavan Eshwadi Shimati Radharani Ki. As we've discussed before, Uddhava, who's um, Krishna's friend and minister, uh, he once visited Vrindavan and he later prayed for a future birth as a blade of grass in Vrindavan just to get sprinkled with dust from the gopis' lotus feet as they pass by. Now, this is really interesting. In Vrindavan, they actually say that the dust of Vrindavan is not only closely connected to Srimati Radharani, but it is also fully devoted to her. I really like that. The dust of Braj is not only closely connected to Srimati Radharani, but that dust is also fully devoted to her. One popular uh, Hindi bhajan says, In Vrindavan, each and every pebble and particle of dust is chanting, Sri Radha, Sri Radha, Sri Radha. The Hindi is, Vrindavan me kan kan bhole, Sri Radha, Sri Radha, Sri Radha. Therefore, our uh, beloved Srila Goswami advises us in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Kuryad Vasham Brajay Shada. Kuryad Vasham Brajay Shada, which means one should always live in Vrindavan. And Rupa Goswami clarifies that if you can't live physically there, you can live in uh, Vrindavan by always remembering Vrindavan, glorif glorifying Vrindavan, hearing discussions of Braj, or just chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, because it's glorification of the divine couple. 
There's a, a very nice verse I found in the Braj Bas language that glorifies this uh, sacred dust of, of Vrindavan. Mukti kahe gopal sho meri mukti bhataye braj raj ud mashtak lage mukti mukt haye jaye. It goes as follows. The goddess Mukti, liberation, goddess Mukti asked Gopal Krishna, or Krishna, O Gopal, I am liberating everyone, but who will liberate me? So Gopal said, If one particle of dust of Braj will touch your forehead, you Mukti will also get liberation. Now, it's also said in olden times, or even nowadays, Brajabhasis would eat um, a few particles of Vrindavan, of Vrindavan dust from time to time. And as we know, as we've discussed in previous lectures, even Krishna, once as a small child, ate the dust of Braj, or sometimes they say the dirt of Braj. And um, last Kartik, I watched a theater performance about Krishna eating Braj Renu, performed by some Brajabhasis um, as I was going around Vrindavan on the Parikama Mark during, during Kartik. Um, they were just doing this as a savor for the, for the pilgrims. They were having this little theater on the, on the side of the Parikama Mark. It was so sweet. And I had a, a devotee who could translate for me the Brajabhas language. And I found the dialogue really interesting. When Mother Yasoda asked Krishna, Lala, your brother Balaram said that you have eaten some dust, some dirt. Now, why would you do that? I always arrange for you to eat nice uh, butter and curd. Why do you eat the, the dust of Braj? They were saying in the theater. So Krishna replied to Mother Yasoda, Joras nai mishri makan me, Joras nai chapan drakhan me, Bhoras braj raj ke chakan me. I hope I've got the Braj Basa proper there. This nectarine taste, this nectarian taste of the dust of Braj is not found in sweet butter and milk, Maya, neither in the 56 kinds of various food items. It's found in the dust of Braj. So Krishna is glorifying. <laughs> he said that taste is sweeter than anything that we partake in this world in foodstuffs. Unfortunately, as many of you know, nowadays there's less and less dust in Vrindavan proper because of modernization. So many buildings are coming up, so many roads are going up, etc. In previous years, um, I remember in previous years when I first came to Vrindavan, the whole Parikama Mark around Vrindavan was only dust. Nowadays it's concrete and Worse than that, there's just trucks and cars and, you know, where's the dust? It's, it's gone. But of course, Vrindavan's very expansive, so we can, we can take advantage of Vrindavan dust in other parts. But it's a little painful that the, the Parikama Marg is asphalt instead of dust these days. Now, we, we can appreciate the value and the importance of Vrindavan dust even more in how our great Acharyas perceive it. By hearing from them. It's said that a, a saintly person, he sees through his ears, not through his eyes. And we can see, by hearing from great Acharyas, we can also take advantage by their example. So there's a wonderful pastime in this regard to Braj Renu. Once, um, one of our great Acharyas, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji. He was the renounced spiritual master of Gorkhashore Das Babaji. He was hungry when he was living in Vrindavan. And the tradition was, and of course it still is, that when such sadhus are hungry, they do madukari. Madukari means literally that the sadhu, he goes to four um, homes of the householders and he begs for some, some prasad and whatever he gets from those, those four homes, He's satisfied that Krishna has given that, that's what he'll eat that day. They go begging for food. So the first person that Jagannath Das Babaji approached that day was a humble, lowly street sweeper 
who was um, actually taking a break for a moment and eating a roti, like a chapati, or they say flatbread sometimes. So Jagannath Das Babaji said to the sweeper, Sir, I'm very hungry. Could you please give me one of your rotis? The, the sweeper replied, Baba, why do you ridicule me? I, I, you know I'm a low caste sweeper. How can I share with you one of my rotis? But Jagannath Das Babaji, he insisted. So the sweeper had no choice but to comply, and he gave a roti to Jagannath Das Babaji, who ate it. Now news spread. In hearing about this, the, how would you say, the, the leading men of Vrindavan, they came to Jagannath Das Babaji and they said, Baba, you are the crest jewel. <laughs> you are the crest jewel of Vrindavan. It pains us to hear anyone criticizing you. But now everyone's talking against you. They're saying, Baba has gone mad. If he defies age-old traditions, what will happen to society? He's taking food from a street sweeper. But Jagannath Das Babaji, he replied, Sirs, you are all learned people. Don't you know the importance of the dust of Vrindavan? It is so surcharged with Krishna Prema that even Lord Brahma desires to become a particle of Brajrenu, this dust of Vrindavan. Therefore, isn't a Vrindavan sweeper who is constantly serving that dust, by sweeping it, by breathing it, by rolling in it, and by bathing in it, more pure than anyone else? <laughs> now it's said that at that moment, how is it put? Silence filled the air, indicating everyone's acceptance of Babaji Maharaja's reply. All glories to Braj Raj. So purifying. Jagannath Das Babaji is an amazing acharya. I was reading that um, he would live six months in Vrindavan and six months in Navadweep Dham. And while living in Navadweep Dham, it's, des it's described he would always show very deep respect to all its residents, even to the animals. Actually, one time, some little puppies um, came and ate some of the prasadam from his plate. He was, you know, we can imagine him sitting on the ground with a leaf plate, he's taking some prasad, and three or four little puppies came. <laughs> and they crawled on the plate, they started eating from his plate. But he didn't protest. But his servant, whose name was um, yeah, Bihari, he became disgusted to see these little dogs, how could you say, devouring his guru's prasadam. So he immediately came, hut, hut, and he drove them away. But immediately, it's described, Jagannath Das Babaji scolded Bihari, saying, Bihari, these puppies are residents of the Holy Nam. They are not ordinary living entities. I will not eat until they come back to share the Mahaprasad from my plate. <laughs> so Bihari had to go find little puppies and bring them back. Such is the vision of such great acharyas like Jagannath Das Babaji. Hare Krishna. So today, uh, we've heard so much glorification of the dust of Vrindavan Dham. Hopefully, it will act as a stimulus for ecstatic love on our paths uh, back home, back to Krishna's abode, to, to Goloka Vrindavan. And surely, as we mentioned in, uh, yeah, it was last Friday's lecture, the next time we go to Vrindavan, let us follow, again, Sridhar Prabhupada's instruction to roll in Vrindavan's dust upon arrival. Let's reestablish this tradition. It used to be followed by all of us <laughs> in the early years. <laughs> because remember in Krishna book, um, chapter 37, Sridhar Prabhupada writes, one who intends to visit Vrindavan should follow the ideal footsteps of a Kura and always think of the pastimes and activities of the Lord. As soon as one reaches the boundary of Vrindavan, he should immediately smear the dust of Vrindavan all over his body without thinking of his material position and prestige. Now having, actually having the dust of Vrindavan 
here on our planet Earth is really a special blessing that's not necessarily there in other parts of, of the universe. And that's confirmed uh, by the great poet Hari Suri, great Vaishnava poet, in a verse uh, with which I will finish today. You can appreciate how you know we have access to, to Brajarano here on the Earth planet. <laughs> may not be everywhere in the universe, but it's definitely here. We should take advantage of it. Here's the verse. It's actually the demigods are speaking. Krishna, you bless the residents of earth with the dust of Braj. We who are in the heavenly planets feel cheated because we've never received it. Dear Lord, there are devotees in the lower planetary systems also, like Bali Maharaj, who also feel cheated that they have not received this dust of brudge. Please, somehow or other, be merciful upon us all. <laughs> so demigods are praying. Even the lower planets, they're lamenting. We don't have access to this dust, and we do. So let us take advantage. So we'll finish there. As I mentioned um, last week, I think we'll have some more classes on Braj Reno. I think I can do uh, two or maybe three or more. Let's see. So, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> um, we'll be with you next Friday. O glorious to Shri Papa, the revealer of the dawn. Shri Shri Gorani Tai Ki, Shri Shri Krishna Balaram Ki, Shri Shri Varashama Shundar Ki, Vrindavan Eshwari, Shri Mati Radharani Ki, the dust of Vrindavan Ki, Maya Purdam Ki, Gorani Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yaki Ki, Nitai Gaur Bhimanandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe Sham. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Five, five, five.